Hi guys, I have a couple of laptops here from Handy Andy at the local phone shop. This is the more modern of the two, would you believe? This is a cool i3 machine. It was originally a Windows 7 machine, so I'm guessing this is like from the early 10s, yeah, 2010s, something like that. He says both of these laptops have power problems. So I'm going to have a quick look, but I'm not totally convinced that these be worth spending a huge amount of time on. Having said that, he asked me if I could fix them, so let's see what we have. This laptop has effectively a normal coaxial power socket. That might be a bit wide, but it seems to fit okay, so we can try it. So I'm going to attach this to my bench power supply. This is ideal because I I can see straight away what current it's drawing when I power it up and it gives me some indication of what's happening. Just check it of course to make sure I have the thing connected the right way round, yeah. Always worth double checking this sort of thing. So do we have 20 volts basically plus your yeah, 19.5, good enough. Right, let's have a look at the current meter on the power supply and see what happens when we connect this up. Yeah, there it is over there. We'll plug it in. This will tell us straight away if there's a short because that'll go to current limit. It'll tell us if it's effectively open, drawing nothing at all. And it draws about 30 milliamps. So there's a little bit of power, if you like, going into there. 40 milliamps. This is like it's sort of in a standby state. Power on. It's drawing some current. Oh, and he's actually booted up this one, so... Why does he say this has a power problem? I mean, it comes on. The only thing I can suggest, first of all, is an actual fact. He has a... Duff power pack. Yeah. Uh, in German, this, by the looks of it. Actually, yeah. Yes, uh, that was debt behind me, yes, debt. Uh, uh, Windows veered gestarten. Yeah. See, I can do a bit of German when it's in front of me. <laughs> Booty too. Yes, debt's teaching me, he's teaching me all the rude words as well. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So, yeah, so this one, well, as far as I can see, it works. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to do anything else with it. I mean, why investigate further? When he comes back in, probably later today or tomorrow, I'll ask him what the problem is. Wouldn't be surprised, he's just got a faulty power supply, but he didn't give me a power supply with it. Okay, we'll shut this one down. And here's the other one, so a Samsung machine, this is even older. That one I'm thinking now of the Windows 7 machine is probably from about 2010, 2011, that's just a guess. This is a Windows Vista machine, I mean, yeah, Core 2 Duo, about 2006 or something. The stuff he asked me to repair sometimes surprises me, but you no, know, it's not up to me, yeah. This one came with a power pack, 3.16 amp. This actually has a uh, connection that fits this laptop. I can just remember where it goes. Yeah, it goes in the back of here. So this does fit it. So let's check first, see if the power pack's working. Okay, switch it on. Didn't explode, so sorry about that, guys. I had a bit of interest, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it didn't explode. Does it give any voltage? This is like one of these three pin ones. You have like a middle pin now, like an inside. Oh, this has 19 volts on the center pin. Yeah, so it looks like the power supply works. Let's see what it does. Well, doesn't seem to do anything. Just take the power supply back out and see if it still has the voltage. Sometimes if you've got a short, it will cause the power supply effectively to shut down until you have to remove the mains. 
No, it still has the 19 volts. Right, I'm going to see if, I think I have a plug like this. I'm going to try this one also on my bench power supply. See if that tells me something before I even bother to open this up. So amongst other things, I have like a whole load of leads here. Quite often if I have old scrap power packs, I'll cut the ends off and just stick them in here because these can be actually rather useful. This is the existing power supply, which appears to be working. Now, it doesn't have like a, a separate inner screen like this, if you like, on the inside. So some will actually have like a center pin, which is a voltage sense, and then another conductor. So there's three, but this only has the two. And um, you can see I have another one here, so a bit corroded, but it's the same thing. So sorry about like a focus slightly, but you can see what I have, okay? So we'll use this, I'll just effectively get the crocodile clip, we we'll just strip this and attach this, then let's see what it does. Actually, it's quite strange, this is a Samsung Apple, I've noticed by the way. <laughs> Samsung Apple? What? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, look. A Samsung Apple. Oh, well, uh, tasty. Yep, there you go, <laughs> Samsung Apple. So, we have another one of these little connectors. Just check again, make sure I have it the right way round, of course. Yep, positive to the center. Let's do the same trick with the bench power supply and see what this one tells us. What's it do? Sort of what the other one was doing, 20 milliamps, okay. 10, 20 milliamps, it's doing a little bit of power. Ah, oh. it's now drawing some cuts that charge the battery. There's a blue light on. So it's drawing 340 milliamps. I think I can actually hear the fan, but I can also hear the fan from the power supply. Yeah, that actually ejected my blue mechanical. Hold the power button there. Yeah, it doesn't shut back down again into the standby. Oh, it does. Okay. So that suggests the chipset's kind of working to some extent, the Super I.O. On. Nothing on the screen. Has it got a backlight problem, maybe? We can try this. We can have a look. I don't think it's charging the battery because when I hold this in, it effectively goes down to a quiescent current again. That other laptop, by the way, could have a battery problem. Maybe that's what he meant. It didn't seem to be charging, but given the age, if he says it's a battery problem, the first thing I'd say is change the battery. Okay. So there's a couple of ways I can test this. One is to shine a very bright light at the screen. Um. If there's anything on there, like it says, no boot device or something, I should actually be able to see that effectively the screen is lighting up, but the backlighting isn't working. I can't see anything. The other probably more sensible option is to connect an external monitor. So I'll just shut this down again. Yeah, back down to 30 milliamps, 20 milliamps. There is a battery fitted, okay. We'll just try an external monitor. You can see that there, a bit of glare, but it's enough for this. So we'll power it back up again. Yep, it's drawing power again, 400, almost 500 milliamps. Then drops to 350. So something's got control of the current here. It's not in standby. There's nothing on the monitor. I've set it to VGA, so there's nothing coming out of it. Okay. So I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but let's see if we can 
disconnect the battery and if this has a CMOS battery maybe if we disconnect that as well if it's some sort of like CMOS issue stopping it from booting that might help I'll take this cover off first this just says memory in fact the screws missing anyway okay something holding that in place then I don't think the screw's missing. Something in there, Oh, nothing. So we can just see the RAM there, no CMOS battery, it was just a board. So a hard drive in this. Okay, let's have a look. Does it clip out this thing? Well, there's a hard drive in there. I don't can see that much. So it has a hard drive. You can just see it down there, okay? Something holding this here. I think it's just, yeah, clips off, okay. So, take that off. Let's go for some obvious stuff, like right? we'll try it with one strip of RAM and then the other strip of RAM. Just to see if this does anything. Okay. Okay, well, without the battery on it, won't even do anything. Oh, door. oh, yes, it is. It's going now. Just didn't want to start. No. Battery's completely flat, I think. I will say that. Just uh, try the other one, and I'll put the first one in here. Okay. I think you can see how useful the bench power supply is in this sort of thing because we get some visual indication of something happening or not happening this doesn't want to start again uh, oh there we go you see without that you wouldn't really know would you yeah I'm going to get around to it because I keep thinking I'll do it and I never have because this is my little universal laptop supply is adding a little current meter onto this I think it'd be really handy actually somebody in the background there so yeah I think it's an idea to see if we can actually fit a little uh, current display on this then we don't need the bench power supply we have the same advantage here. We'll leave that for another video. But there will be one now, I've remembered. I've mentioned that for a long time, yeah? So, this old laptop, obviously, is kind of trying to boot up and doesn't for whatever reason. I think we can say it's not the screen because the external monitor doesn't work unless there's something strange about this and Windows has to be running first for the external monitor. I've swapped the RAM around, I've tried one, I've tried the other, it doesn't work in any of those combinations, so although they could both be faulty RAM, I'm not totally sure that is the case really. It won't work without the battery, it won't work with the battery, it doesn't seem to charge the battery either. So I'm going to open this up and see if this has a separate CMOS battery, some of these old laptops will have, and if it has I'm going to disconnect the CMOS battery and then leave it a little while that's if there's any voltage in the CMOS battery I may even fit a new one if there isn't and let's see if it starts then if it doesn't start then this is the sort of thing I'm going to say look it's probably going to cost more 
then because this is pretty much yeah junk <laughs> to be honest unless somebody specifically needs this or maybe they just want the data off the hard drive otherwise it's probably more trouble than it's worth but let's go a little bit further and let's see okay guys i found a tear down for this but it's not the, exactly the same as mine but the cmos battery holder is just here so i've managed just to lift the motherboard to get that out it's still actually kind of like stuck down under here but as you can see i can easily flex it's just a little bit like so and that's all i need to get the battery out so here's the cmos battery i wouldn't be surprised to find this is completely exhausted yeah it's dead so this is my last job for today so i'm just going to leave this now till tomorrow morning put a new battery in and then let's see if it wants to start okay it's tomorrow guys already it's tomorrow yeah so i've put the new battery in it's been sitting here all night without a battery fitted let's have a look to see if this made any difference well the blue lights on it's and it's working okay so that's two out of two nice one well that didn't take too long so that was worth it actually both of these fixed handy andy will be happy it just so happens somebody's just walked in with another small job which is this thing this is a i5 7th gen this is a mini pc and he says the button's faulty so when i questioned him i mean the front's falling off it that's the first thing he says well his wife says that when she presses the button the light comes on and now she presses the button the light doesn't come on so therefore the button must be faulty <laughs> if only such thing was always true i mean maybe it is but i mean how you get to like i press the button the light doesn't come on therefore it must be the button it's kind of like saying i turn the key in the car and it doesn't start therefore it must be the battery you know i mean or it must be the key itself yeah i don't get it i just don't get it yeah i don't think anybody would actually say that yeah so why did he say this but anyway anyway i mean i had a bit of a laugh about that comments below down there guys yeah I'll get into there let's see if we can get this thing to work well guys this one's probably long enough already so we know what we're going to be doing on the next video let's see if we can repair this little mini pc or micro pc hope you enjoyed that looking forward to see you all soon ciao for now guys